Hey everybody, it's Christopher Name and welcome back. Today I want to go over a couple questions that I recently saw on my YouTube channel. And I think it's very imperative to go over to um, to the newbies. So on my video for my Singer Futura XL550 Bobbin Rattle Noise Fix, I received a message from a Katie Roselle. She says, this is quite long, so I'm going to read it. I bought a Futura SEQS 6700U from a guy a couple months ago. It took me some time to find a safe permanent spot and set it all up to find a computer I could install the software on and would read the cable from PC to machine and worked beautifully for me, starting out with a basic sewing, a quilt for my son. Then I finally got the embroidery part set up and I forgot to change needles. Of course, I ended up with a broken needle and then it would embroider for the most part beautifully until it came to the final satin stitching around the edges and it would bird nest halfway through the design. I found your other video about sanding the throat, about sanding the throat plate and that worked for a second design and then I tried my first design again halfway through bird nesting. I really thought he sold me a bad machine because of the terrible reviews on this specific machine. Turns out the bobbin case was ate up, so I changed that out and sanded the throw plate again. And I'm praying tomorrow when I try the first design again with a smaller needle, it will go smoothly. I'm new to embroidery, and I don't care how many bad reviews a machine has, 99% of the issues is strictly caused by user error. I had no clue it mattered that my presser foot was up while threading the machine that a needle strike break could cause my throat plate to shear my thread or the bobbin case had a, had any bearing on my top thread. I feel like an idiot now because it was so close to literally cussing this poor innocent man out, man out for something that was not his fault. I'm going to order a few more extra bobbin cases and the throat plate for my machine this week just to have on hand. Thank you so much for seeing me major embarrassment and beyond frustration between your threading videos, the presser foot having to be up, sanding the throat plate and bobbin noise, and the most important thing, not to junk the machine and do process of elimination. Now off to find, hopefully, you doing a video on oiling these machines. All right. So she's admitting user error. You know, she's admitting that most all this is her fault. Um, but there's something that I'm finding even on the sewing groups, and I talked about this many times on the Facebook sewing groups. Someone will get a machine, they'll take a picture of a presser foot that came with it, they'll post the picture on the sewing group, and they'll say, What is this foot? Now, all you have to do is open up your instruction manual. Go to the page that shows you all the accessories that came with your machine. Find that foot diagram of what that foot is. It'll give you the name of the foot. Then you take the name of the foot. You go over to YouTube. You enter the name of that foot. Say it's say it's a straight stitch foot. So you go sewing machine straight stitch foot in, in uh, YouTube. Then all these videos will come up and show you how to use a straight stitch sewing foot. You follow me? Okay. Now... Let's go over this. She talks about she didn't know she had to have her presser foot up. All right. She said she bought a, a future SEQS 6700. Well, let's just say that this did not come with an instruction manual since she bought it used. Also, because she never took lessons on how to operate a sewing machine, she had all these errors. This is what people have been doing. They buy machines online. They buy a used machine. They've never been to a sewing class. They don't take time to study. And you heard me talk about this many times, people, where everybody wants to run before they crawl, before they crawl or they can walk, right? All right. So let's do this. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to paste what I just did. Future SEQS 6700 Sewing Machine Manual. All right, so this is going to take me to right here, the SEQS 6700 Singer Futura support on the F Singer website, and voila, I've got an instant instruction manual that I can download and save. So let's go to the instructions here. Let's scroll down. Oh, before we scroll down, let's just look here in the instruction. Uh, threading the top thread, which says it's on page 7. Okay, 
So we'll get to that in a minute. But let's go down here and you see on this page it, and it tells you every part and what it's for, right? Every part and what it's for. And then it starts listing listing the accessories that come with the machine, right? And lo and behold, what do we have here? Diagrams of all the presser feet and accessories that come with the machine, and they're numbered, so you can go over here to see what they are. It tells you the name of the accessories that came with the machine, right? Look at number 22. What's 22? Embroidery presser foot. Number 23, embroidery software CD. You see what I'm saying? Here, over here, number, number 16. What is number 16? Number 16 is a buttonhole foot and underplate. So you see, guys, you know, many people never open instruction manual, and I don't understand why. Why no one opens the instruction manual and starts page by page to read it, to learn, okay? Because most of the time, as we know, uh, it's user error when they don't know what they're doing, and most of the times when machines break, it's because people don't know what they're doing and they break them. I have machines that I've owned since 1991 and I've still have them today and for some of them just had some basic maintenance that needed to be taken care of but I still have these machines and they're all different brands and they all still work for me I've had friends that I taught in sewing that bought models that I own they broke them within a year they're slamming that presser foot down they're yanking that fabric out of there they have no patience they have no patience they destroy everything okay so I'm going to scroll down here let's see here we're going to look on that page number for threading the machine uh, what was that That was page seven okay so here's page seven threading the top thread here we go threading the top thread a raise the presser foot lifter Always be sure to raise the presser foot lifter before threading the top thread. If the presser foot lifter is not raised, correct thread tension cannot be obtained. There it is, right there. Right here, my friends. That is the first thing about threading. So when you see these questions um, people are posting on, on Facebook sewing groups, this lady didn't know about her, that she had to raise the presser foot. So basically what she was admitting is that she never read her instruction manual. So the reason why I'm doing this video right now is because people are not reading. And listen, on some Facebook sewing groups, you've got moderators that will scold someone for telling someone to read their instruction manual. Why? Why is someone preventing someone from becoming self-sufficient and independent and being led to where the education is for them? It's just like people who watermark or put their name on photos of their work and share it with a sewing group and a moderator will come around and say, we do not allow self-promotion. Well, I'm sorry, but that is basically a copyright. Anytime you put your name or your website or anything on a photo, you are copywriting that photo. Do you know how many photos are lifted off of the internet and used in commercial advertising and that person who originally took that photo never sees a penny? Do you know how many of these photos are lifted and other people claim it as their own that they created it? It's to protect you. But you have moderators that are preventing you from protecting your work. Why? why now I'll be honest with you um, it's a mindset it is a mindset and anyone who is self-employed or anyone trying to make a living or anyone trying to protect their artwork will know this other people who think they have power over the law are making these rules on these Facebook groups but they're actually violating the government copyright laws by telling people they can't use a copyright or put their name on a photo all right so you guys have the law behind you and if these people kick you off these groups then you know what you don't want to share your photo there without your information on it because it's going to be lifted someone that's preventing you from putting your name on a photo is more than likely lifting those photos and selling them somewhere as their own for stock photography somewhere and you will never know because that's not the field that you're always in to look at Okay?
So let's go back to the instruction manual. So you can see with the instruction manual, you go page by page, and this is how I teach my students. Go through your instruction manual, read each page by page, and it tells you everything. And do everything on your sewing machine that they're doing on each page of the sewing machine instruction manual. This will help you okay and then if there's samples to be made there's uh, then do the samples follow the instruction manual pretend you're in college pretend you're in college and this is your textbook that you have to work out of okay um, because this is an advanced education for you beyond high school all right get the instruction manual out. look at read everything here it tells you about the twin needle if you're going to use a twin needle you have to engage the twin needle button so and that prevents your zigzag or decorative stitch from going too wide and breaking the needle. All right. And the videos, there are things also like we all know some of these singer issues could have been improved on. And that's why I did the videos to show you some suggestions on how I'm having success. And everything you see me having success at is I'm sharing my secrets with you. Okay. But the most important thing is everyone is to read your instruction manual and then you won't get frustrated you won't have these things get a notebook out go page by page with your instruction manual read what it tells you if it's if it's giving a demonstration like this right here you see the page on right here this is giving a demonstration of a straight stitch okay and you can see what they're doing here they're doing an example of a straight stitch and do what they're doing and then make a sample put it in your book all that information there they show you where the thread cutter is here a manual thread cutter is if your machine did not come with an automatic thread cutter here they're installing a zipper you know people complain they have issues with zippers and here they're giving you a sample in the book how to do zippers but the most important thing as this one woman said one time on one of the Facebook sewing groups oh well my my instruction manual didn't show diagrams of the accessories that came with it and I asked her what her make a model was and she gave it to me I went right online and pulled up an instruction manual as easy as I did right here for you all and there were all the diagrams that explained everything so I don't know why people feel that they live in this make-believe world in their head that they think whatever they're gonna say people are gonna believe them and not investigate it you know I, I, but then you always have the enablers that will come on and they'll copy page word for word from the instruction manual and post it on that Facebook group instead of saying to that person hey Check your instruction manual out. I found that on page 7. Read page 7. You know what I'm saying? So I hope this gives you all a little tip of advice to help and understand and encourage other people where they can get the education from. All right? You take care, everybody. I'll talk to you in my next video. Have a good night, good day, whatever time you're watching this video. Thank you. Love you all. Bye-bye.